Okay, so I already made a tutorial on how to use Waves Tune real time. This is gonna be more about how to load it into the software. Okay, I forgot to mention this while I was recording this in the studio and I realized while editing, I didn't have a description on what the video was about. Okay, so what it's about, it's about how to get Waves Tune real time into FL Studio. It's about how to route it and be able to record and hear it while you're recording and then also go back and edit the settings later so you have a dry vocal. And it's about how to get your latency set right so it doesn't sound all wonky when you're hearing yourself while you're recording. And I also mention uh, Audiobox or Scarlett. What I mean is whatever sort of interface you have. Um, that's what I'm referring to when I say that. Anyway, here's the rest of the video. First things first, hopefully you've already got it actually dragged in. If you hadn't, I'll cover that real quick, but um, I assume most of you have. It's going to be when you're pulling in an effect here, there's going to be replace, go to more plugins, go to manage plugins down here. And then wherever you installed your Waves plugins, um, it's gonna be somewhere here, hopefully. And if not, you can just quick click add um, and then find where your Waves plugins installed. Then do a uh, find more plugins. It'll scan all these libraries and then it'll come back to you. It'll be highlighted in yellow once it comes through. And then click the star next to it, like I have on Massive, and then you're good to go. Cool. So that's gonna get it so you can actually pull it up in your plugin picker here. Waves tune real time right there. There's more detailed videos if that doesn't make sense to you. How to get it actually set up so you can record and hear the tuner while you're recording. Cause you don't wanna have to go back later and record it and then hear later what it sounds like with tune. You wanna hear it with tune while you're recording, okay? So you gotta have a pretty good computer for this because if there's too much latency, if it takes too long for your computer to catch up and there's like a delay, it's gonna sound weird because it has to process a lot. It has to process the vocals, it has to go in. It's not just going straight from your mic to your headphones, it has to go through, since you're processing it, all of this FL Studio stuff here. So to make sure you're only hearing the tune the version, make sure you have the monitor setting off on your audio box or your Scarlet, whatever it is. You just want a direct playback from your DAW, FL Studio. Cool, so what I do is I always route my vocals into 10, okay? Now when you automatically set it up, it'll be routed like this, so it's coming in out of 10 and into the master. You don't want that. 10's not gonna go to the master. You've got your input of three up at the top, that's my vocal mic, and then 10 routes to 11, which is where I put my vocal processing, okay? So you can record on this 10 channel, okay? And when I record it, I'll have the raw feed, but I'll be hearing it as I'm singing with the effects on. So that way I can change the effects later, remix it, things like that. Cause you don't want to record it with auto tune on. You're kind of locked into how it sounds then. You want to record it raw and then edit it after. So that's how you do it. Route it into 10, go into 11, make sure 11 is going to your master. Okay, so cool. Uh, when you're setting up your vocal stack and getting all those effects in there on 11, tuner comes first. You don't want to tuner being affected with uh, delay. You don't want to affect delay with your tuner or your reverb. It's going to sound all messed up. Tuner comes first. You want a raw audio feed. Next comes compression. And pretty much everything after it is just a normal vocal stack. There's other videos on YouTube that will explain it better than I will. Ultimately, tuner comes first. Oh, yeah. Uh, make sure you're going into your... Um, latency here make sure it's down around five milliseconds because a lot of people will be trying to record with the tuning on and it it works but the thing is it's like there's a delay on it there's a latency and so you're hearing it in your headphones a split second after you sing it and it's hard to like sing when it's messed up in your headphones you want it so it's hitting pretty much at the same time in your headphones as when you're singing it so that there's there's no delay and i don't mean delay as in effect i just mean delay as in latency as in going through and processing all these things so you need a pretty quick computer uh Get it around five milliseconds. If it's uh, having underruns or having issues and your computer can't keep up, you can go maybe up to seven or eight. But once you get closer to 10, man, it's, it's just not going to work. So, um, yeah, make sure your latency is set low, your buffer length here. You can find that in the settings in the audio. Cool. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Um, I try to keep this video as short as possible. I don't want to make it too confusing. Uh, but if there's anything I missed, I can answer you in the comments. 
And I've got some other videos on more in depth on how to use Waves Tune real time or to get different tones. So you can check those out on my channel. Subscribe, like this video, and thanks so much for watching.